Well, hello and a very warm welcome here to the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm and semi-finals day at the Men's European Handball Championships. Norway prepared to take on Croatia. The fans are here. 24 teams that started out the competition just over two weeks ago are now down to just four. The other semi-final will see Spain take on Slovenia. Well, the two teams about to play have never won the title. The uh, Croatians, for their part, have actually reached eight Euro semi-finals and never won. They've qualified every single year since the European Championship started in 1994. This is the teams arriving earlier. Norway, who make their eighth appearance, and their best result was in 2016, when they finished fourth. They were denied the bronze medal by Croatia. They are back here now to see if they can uh, put that to right. So the team making their way into the arena. This uh, huge complex, which hosts a couple of the local football teams, but also concerts, and which today has been set up with a 19,000 seat capacity. A competition that has been hosted by three countries, not just Sweden, but also Norway and Austria. They all hosted preliminary groups, and then it was the main round in Vienna and Malmo, and now to Stockholm for the final weekend. The coaches are off first. Lino Sheva was uh, preceded by Igor Vori, a former great player on the line, who's now one of his assistants. We said they've been in every single edition of these European Championships, the Croatians. Eight semi-finals and somehow never won it. Three bronze, two silver. The last medal was that bronze when they denied the Norwegians. Huge figure of Musa disappearing on the left. He's an absolute towering giant. The uh, line player, although used very much in a defensive role. So if you ever wondered what he looks like behind the scenes, that is the changing room here in the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm. So later today, Spain will take on Slovenia. Spain, the defending champions against Slovenia. They were runners-up once before, but would love to take the win here. The added incentive for these uh, teams, of course, is that the winner is automatically qualified for the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Norway and Croatia, though, are the first semi-finalists. They are ready to come out on court. The fans are still streaming in to this huge arena, three sides of the permanent building being used, and then the temporary structure. They're standing next to at the moment. Closing off the arena, creating a cosy atmosphere. As cosy as you can get with 19,000 people. Well, Norway undefeated in the competition so far, won all their matches against Bosnia, France and Portugal to finish top of Group D in Trondheim in the preliminary round, and then they won all their matches in Malmo in the main round, Hungary, Sweden, Iceland and Slovenia to finish top of Group 2. Well, for Croatia, three wins in the preliminary round in Graz in Austria against Montenegro, Belarus and Serbia, and then three wins in Vienna in the main round, Austria, Germany and the Czech Republic. And on their very last game, well, they uh, nearly made it, but ended up settling for a draw with uh, Spain in the top of the table clash. That meant they finished runners-up, effectively on goal difference only. The Croatian fans, though, would love to get that gold medal, the one that has always eluded them. They've been close in world championships as well before. That's never quite worked out. They have been Olympic champions a couple of times, 96 and 2004. But this Euro title is one they really want to put on the wall. But, uh, they are facing a Norwegian team who, after the uh, early exits and surprise exits of uh, France and Olympic and world champions Denmark, who didn't make it out of the preliminary rounds, Suddenly, the Norwegians found themselves hot favourites to win, but uh, Croatia 
will be a huge handful for them today. Dunyak there, second, just uh, reaching down and coming up. Will be absolutely key for them. In the same mould for Norway, Sander Sagerson has been the outstanding player of the tournament for them. Well, that's great. Keep your ears warm. And you can still use it for water polo. So we are ready for the teams. In this 14th Euro final. Spain, who won it two years ago in Croatia, where the uh, Croatians finished disappointingly in fifth. Saying that uh, in 2016, when they finished with that bronze medal, beating the Norwegians, seven of their players for Croatia remain as the European Handball Federation flag is brought onto the court. For the Norwegians, eight of their players remain from that uh, 2016 Euro Championship. And so with the flag out, it will be time for the team to be introduced. Croatians are ready. First on court is Marino Maric, 29-year-old, one of five in the team who play the club handball in Germany, plays from Elsungen. Dunyak comes out, he will be key, 23 goals, seven fast breaks, nine assists. Dunyak, who appears here in his uh, seventh European Championship. Stepancic, the right back. He's had a terrific tournament with 24 goals. Moved from PSG, where ironically he was teammates with uh, Sagerson. Now plays in uh, Hungary for Pixeged. Karacic, fantastic uh, playmaker who can make such a difference. And Musa comes out afterwards, two meters, 114 kilos. Marko Mamic, another left back, two meters tall. It's been used quite a bit, actually. Three, uh, three hours and 37 play. For the uh, Croatians, they were deprived of uh, Sindric, who missed the uh, match against Spain through injury. Ironically, plays for Barcelona. that uh, he is back today how fit of course we don't know that said Karacic picked up a bit of a knock the other day now the goalkeepers Marin Shego a 30% save rate plays for Montpellier in France and then Matej Ashanin who is uh, new to the team just seven internationals under his belt and one of four who make their debut at a major competition for Croatia that is the team of Croatia for this Euro semi-final Time now to meet the Norwegian team. First out, Nikolaisen, one of the newcomers to the team. Sander Sagerson, 51 goals in the competition. Top scorer, top with the assists as well, 39 of them. Over the Yodet came on, who's uh, 23, uh, also playing in his first major competition. When Norway was certain to go through to the semi-final. They effectively lined up their B team against Slovenia, who did the same back against them in their last main round match over year that got a good run out. Oh, got a good run out. There he is, William Oer, the left back. Four goals from five attempts, showing that they have got strength in depth. It's just that they like to use the regular faces. That was uh, Christian Bjornsson, who's uh, wearing the captain's armband now, because sadly, Beate Murol is off ill and has missed the Euro. Goran Johannesson. 22 goals in the competition so far for the left back. He's on great form with his club. And Christian O'Sullivan, the Magdeburg captain, 
who's been a great option in the central position with Johannesson. There's Reinkin, who's uh, emerged as first choice, especially after, sadly, uh, Magnus Rød picked up an injury. Fractured a bone in his foot, the uh, Flensburg right back. And so he is out of action. Blondes making his way out. Bergeru joined the back of the queue, top goalkeeper for the team. So Dunyak will be hoping to lead his team, but then Sagerson, he has his own views at the other end. Ironically, they'll be uh, teammates next year in Kiel in Germany. The referee is very experienced from Spain, Oscar Aloy, Angel Sabroso, refereed the final of the uh, Rio 2016 Olympic final and also the World Championships of 2011. And now it's time for the national anthems. Norway first. Big cheer, a lot of fans made their way from Croatia. And it's their anthem now. A huge cheer rings out around the arena. Teams have met 14 times. Croatia have won eight, Norway four, and they've been two draws in European competition. It's 6-1 to Croatia with the draw. Last meeting was at Euro 2018, when Croatia won 32-28. At the World Championships in 2017 in France, Norway beat Croatia in the semi-final. Horvat missing a penalty at the end of normal time could have uh, tied it all up for them. So for Norway, seem likely to start with Sagosen Reinkin at the back and either Johansson or Sullivan in the middle. Jondal and Jonsson on the wings with possibly Gullerud ahead of Uvenby on the line for the uh, bigger physical presence and Bergerud in goal. That is their coach Christian Berger. What an amazing job he has done with the team here. But this is one podium they've never stepped on. For Croatia, Dunjak, Stepancic and probably Karacic, but uh, Sindric has still got that injury. They should start at the back with Horvat and uh, Mandic on the wings. Mandic is their only recognised left winger. Maric most likely on the line in attack and Shego in goal. Lino Sherva then, legendary coach for Croatia. Back for another spell in charge of his beloved team. Came back in 2017, assisted by Igor Vori, a legendary player. The fans are ready. We are nearly there. Semi-final number one at Euro 2020. Norway and Croatia face off in a rematch of that uh, Euro 2016 bronze medal playoff. But they won gold now when that was won 
by Croatia. The exchange there, Borgolund on the right, great player. Here we go then, Norway in the red shirts and blue shorts throw off the semi-final of the Men's European Handball Championships here in the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm in Sweden. Paul Bray here with you for this game. 19,000 seat arena hosting its first match of Euro 2020. It's been jointly hosted with Norway and Austria this uh, edition. So deep defence for Croatia who start with Dunjak in front of a very deep 5-1 defence looking for the line. No connection, nothing given. Quick break by uh, the Croatians. Dunjak down the middle, Bergerud saves and that will be a free throw. There was the exchange between the two stars who will be club teammates in Paris next year, both of whom will be key. So less than a minute played. And uh, we're already on our second attack. Lino Sherva scratches his head. Took over from Zilisko Babic in uh, 2017. After another miss on the medals there when they finished fourth. So, first attack for Croatia. And it is uh, Sindric who started in the centre. Stepancic, the only real recognised left-handed right back. Oh, lovely pass to the line. First goal, Croatia. Marino Maric. That was a superb supply into the line. First uh, assist already for Dunjak. He's trying to control the defence behind him. Bjornsson goes in as an extra line player. Reinkind, they started with O'Sullivan in the centre and he scores. And not only that, but it's going to be a two-minute suspension. So first goal of the game for Norway. Their fans on their feet took off and that shove in the back is why Dunyak has been sent off very early suspension just what they didn't want O'Sullivan celebrates Christian O'Sullivan is uh, club captain at uh, German side Magdeburg fourth in the Bundesliga and actually Musa one of the uh, four line plays for Croatia is uh, club teammate. I have to put friendship aside though for 60 minutes. So a slow build up at the moment. They've had the change in the middle. Karacic coming on in the middle. Sindric. Karacic makes a shot. He gets a free throw. up for a long-range shot with a passive play call goes wide so Sander Sagerson looking focused 51 goals 39 assists in this competition tops the rankings on that Look for the interception, just missed the connection. Sindric, long range shot, right up in the corner. Sagerson. A PSG player, they know how dangerous he is, but the short handed defense just couldn't quite cover it. And Shago is well beaten in goal. So, four minutes played, 2-1. Norway are leading. The suspension is over. Croatia back to full strength again. And back on comes Dunjak. 
Dunya cuts around the middle. Oh, tried to release Stepancic, but there's a foul anyway. Uvebu is the player who's in trouble. There he is, just crashes into him, and he gets a yellow card for that. And the referee's blowing the whistle. It's so loud in the arena, they can barely hear it, but... Uh, in fact, it's not even them. Oh! <laughs> Caught the goalkeeper napping. And not only that, but it's a two-minute suspension. Stepancic, the scorer, but you'll see him get a hefty shove in the back there from Uvebu, who's only just been yellow-carded. Carries on hanging on. Gularud was trying to cover at the back, but had two players to uh, contend with. Uvebu is off. And now it's a power play for Croatia. Five minutes played. Sagosen, O'Sullivan, oh, it's intercepted. Unfairly, says the referee, it touched the foot. Angel Sabroso not amused. Well, did it. I thought he got a hand on it. No, that's just the way it is. Goalkeeper's out for Norway while they're short-handed. Sagerson. Penalty, one, no, Sullivan. Teed up by uh, Sagerson this time. I wouldn't quite call it an assist. O'Sullivan still had a lot of work to do to get there. But breaks around the outside of Stepancic and any shot would do after that because he was being held. Penalty is one, and Sagerson will take it. He scored 10 from 14 in the competition. Shigo saved just the one from 10 in goal, and doesn't save that one. Second goal of the game for Sander Sagerson. Leans across, and as he jumps, as he was coming down, he put it over his shoulder. As soon as you commit yourself, you're in trouble against this 24-year-old, who's now gone past the 450 mark for Norway and also the 100 international matches for them at this Euro. 3-2 Norway are leading despite being short-handed, but now it's a power play for Croatia. They have to make this work well. Dunjak looks for the line, super supply! Brilliant, right through the legs of the defender. Croatian flags are cheering every pass. Gularud had no idea where that was but Maric knew exactly for his second goal. It's all square, but the suspension is served out. The goalkeeper is back in again. They started as ever, the uh, Norwegians with Bjornsson and Jondal on the wing, on the wings. Jondal doing well, scoring well. Bjornsson, by his standards, maybe started slowly, but is picking up well. He's also the new captain of the team in Mural's absence. To the line, couldn't quite turn, he's got the free throw only, never got into a shooting position. His arm was down, Guluruda was good defending. Marko Mamic. Being used in defence only at the moment, Mamic. Still with the um, penalty, he took the shot, it was in his back in fairness, but... Uh, Crowd are happy with that though. Well, the Norwegians are. There was the pickup, and he was quite literally lifted up and shifted out by David Mandic. Sagosen! Beats Shego again. Third goal for the PSG back player. Took it very quickly this time, went the other way. Dunyak looks on. Eyes to the sky after that. It's early days, though. 4-3, the scoreline for Norway. Eight and a half minutes played. Second penalty scored by Sagerson. Three goals overall. Interesting that Stepancic has just been uh, blocked there by Sagerson. They were teammates last year at PSG in Paris. Stepancic now at Pixeged in Hungary. And they pulled one back. Horvat. Free throw. Some pretty tough defending going on out there. There was the uh, 
supply and Horvat scores from the wing. He probably still harbours a few nightmares because at the end of their semi-final at the World Championships in 2017, they were level. He had a penalty in the dying seconds to put uh, Croatia into the World Championship final. He missed and Norway went on to win in extra time. So uh, maybe uh, a ghost to be laid to rest there as well, although they have met at the European Championships last year. Since then in Croatia, where the Croatians won by four. Nine and a half minutes played, and as we expected, this is a very close affair between these two teams. So, patient build-up. In the centre, Sindrich, who uh, missed the uh, final main round match against Spain, when both teams knew they were qualified. Lovely look, pass into the wing! Look at that! Teed up beautifully, ten minutes played. Croatia is in front, Mandic, the scorer. Cut out the back pass, went straight into the wing, and David Mandic, playing in his first Euro, scores his first goal of the game. Already, we've been paying just over 10 minutes, 121 passes, Croatia. In the 70s for Norway, maybe more economical in their build-up, that's given. Reinkind set his mind on where he was going and no one was going to stop him. Cuts inside Mandic, tried to block him. Lino Sherva thinks that's an attacking foul. It's not given though, Reinkind gets the goal. 5-5. Five, five. Nip and Tuck here in Stockholm then in his first semi-final of Euro 2020. Lino Sherva, a bit of a discussion on the bench. Oh, brilliant play. He's been everywhere. Marino Maric, third goal. The 29-year-old who plays for Melsungen. And at the other end. Norway come away empty-handed. Lovely uh, pass. Came in behind Maric. And no communication in defence. So, the build-up with Croatia leading by one now. Briefly, the Norwegians have had the lead periodically. Still on the brink here. Karacic. Oh! Deflected, I think. May have fooled the Begaru, the goalkeeper. Two goal lead. Stepancic. Second of the game. That goes wide, but it's a free throw. Here's the goal. Karacic and Sindric are on at the moment. And uh, find a way through to tee up. Stepancic has got a big shot on him. Puts that away. And Norway hit back. Sagerson again, goal number four. Here's John Berger. Still not able to look too relaxed. Block on the line was holding three people back, but he dropped the ball and then took the extra steps to go through the gap. He'd taken off on the uh, third step, that's why, by dropping the ball and then picking it up as he landed, that buys him the next three steps to go through. One goal in it. And uh, having started, with uh, that's going to be a free throw only. Dunyak is off at the moment. They're trying to get a little bit of pace by having Sindric there working together with Karacic. The two very, very quick players at the back. They're superb, great to watch. But still keeping Stepancic on the far side. Well, in fact, they haven't because they've now shifted him out. Here's a bit of pace. Not turned over, says the referee. Play on. Matej Ristic is playing as a makeshifter right back at the moment. 
That's an attacking foul against Croatia. Tries to come through. Oh, that was a bit clumsy. Marko Mamic puts him down and very quickly Oscar Alui, the Spanish referee, is in to uh, slow things down. But uh, Mamic has got a two-minute suspension, grabs him and basically hangs on until he's dragged him to the floor. Lino Sherva thinks that's OK. Spanish referees definitely don't. So he is off. Another suspension for Croatia. Power play for Norway. That's a shame because uh, Croatia were just tinkering on uh, getting the edge. So warming up. Now is uh, Goran Johansson. Hasn't come on yet. It was an interesting choice that... Uh, to start with O'Sullivan at the back, and now they are putting in two on the line, which they often do when they have the extra player. Good block by the defence. Took the sting out of the shot, and Sigel picks it up. That was uh, superbly done, actually. Sindrich. So coming up to 15 minutes played. So it's a yellow card. For uh, interesting overboot. Well, that's uh, a mistake because he's already on a yellow card. He's saying nothing. And I think that's what the uh, table officials are saying. Miroslav Baum's called them over. Well, interesting. So not given. can tell you, we've been playing now just over 15 minutes, and uh, Croatia, the work ethic is enormous. They, they have actually made 100 passes more than Norway in this semi-final so far. They are moving the ball with some zest out there, I have to say, but that's what you get when you put Karacic and uh, Sindric together. You may not get the long-range firing, but you get a lot of pace. Bergerud's happy with that. That's his second save. Croatia still short-handed. They've got to make this power play work this time. Looks for the line. That didn't go through. Looks for the wing instead. There's no space. Sagerson spreading it around. Now he tries again. Now the space. Brilliant save. Schiegel. Third save. It was a decent angle as well for Bjornsson. And he could see it going through the legs. Schrego quickly closed and blocks it. And Croatia back to full strength and have done well because Norway haven't been able to change the score during the power play. Shot efficiency, 70% for Croatia, 60% for Norway. Below par for Norway, it's 65%. Croatia came in on 60%. So they're actually doing a little bit better than normal. And that's going to help make it even better. Maric's fourth goal. And Croatia lead by two again. Sagerson shoots on the turn, nothing given. Croatia break. Sindric tries to tee up. Connection misses. Bergud puts it back out again. O'Sullivan. Almost running out of options. Sagerson gets it back again. O'Sullivan into the line. Good defending. Well, the first part was. Second part is a little bit unnecessary. Uvebu. There was the pass into the line earlier for Maric's fourth goal of the game. What a lovely assist by Karacic. And in fact, Uh, speciality really finding the uh, way through in on the line mind you so Sagosin but today the defense is working well for Croatia they're back to Dunjak at the front very deep defense trying to give a little bit less room for the uh, cross play at the back Einken is on Johansson was warming up 
But he's still waiting to come on, Shrego. The bench reacts. And slowly but surely, the Croatians edging ahead here. Point blank range, Sagerson. You could have put your mortgage on that one. But Shego, five saves from six shots. By their standards, Norway are having a nightmare out there with their finishing. So, Karacic, Cindric. Releases the ball, Stepancic has come on, he went through the legs, it was a poor pass, the break is on. O'Sullivan. It's only going to be a free throw, they're saying that should be two minutes and something else. Referees are talking to each other on the headsets. Free throw. Let's have a look and see. Sindrich gets there. Stops him from running. There's no defenders behind, which is why the uh, Norwegians are claiming. But Sindrich has been sent off for that. So they finally got their wish after the Spanish referees were talking to each other on their headsets. But they won't get the penalty. So two-goal deficit for Norway who have only beaten Croatia once in the European Championships. That was in the group stages in uh, 2016. They actually then met again in that bronze medal playoff at the end of the competition when Croatia won. A bit of mopping required now. So there is Jondal, winger, who's uh, not seen any action yet. The service not quite coming his way. Plays for Flensburg, one of four players in the Norwegian team who play for Flensburg. Not enough space there. And now the space. He's waiting patiently and again. Schigel is driving Norway mad in goal. Save number six. 34-year-old goalkeeper who plays for Montpellier in France. And that's an attacking foul. Turnover. Dunja, quick pass down. Oh, just beyond the fingertips, and Croatia take a three-goal lead. Fair to say the fans are happy. And Dunja, being used in defence, did well. It was very nearly intercepted. It was a bit of a Hail Mary pass, but Horvat scores. And Norway struggling. That's gone in, though. Second goal that was for Horvat at the other end. And here is the reply by Gullerud. Plays for Minden in Germany. Dribbles it past the keeper. Taking some of the pace off it. 28 year old. He's past the 125 international match mark for Norway here. So after a bit of a change when they. Uh, Interestingly put, uh, Ristic on at uh, right back. He's actually a left back, very new to the team. It was obviously just to cover for a little while. Dunyak is back into the attack now, while Sindrich is serving that two-minute suspension. We've got a free throw. While uh, Dunyak, he went down a bit heavily. 31 years of age. Arrived here at these uh, championships with 658 goals under his belt in 202 internationals, the Croatian playmaker. Free throw, no way through there. 20 minutes play, 9-7 now. The lead for Croatia. It was briefly 9-6. Long range shot. But, uh, got a touch on the way through by defender to throw in. Possession stays with Croatia. Lino Sherva, anxious as he always is, he paces. He's constantly talking to players, to officials. Oh, off the bar, stays out. Unlucky Stepancic. Reinkind takes the shot, nothing given. He rushed it. He was thinking about whether to make a pass or have a go at uh, reaching around. He'd run out of steps. As off come. Uh, Comes Dunyak and back on for the attack. Comes Sindric with that suspension served out. And Maric. There are the two defenders, Musa and Dunyak at the moment. Well, uh, a 
amazing atmosphere here in the uh, Tele2 Arena in Stockholm. So the problem when you're playing with uh, the quick playmakers is uh, you need a bit of height and uh, between Sindrich and Karacic. They're not exactly small, but they can't quite provide that. Bergerud, good save. Fourth of the game. Croatian uh, shooting stats slipping a little here. O'Sullivan, Tangen's now come in for Reinkin, number 25. Plays for Skjern in Denmark. And Sagerson tries to find the options. He's not had a great championship, Tangen. Eight goals from 21 shots. Here he comes again. That's nice, though. This would be a good day for him to find his range. Norwegian fans celebrate, having been three down. This one brings them back. To within one. Hundred and seventeen kilometers an hour. That. Seven and a half minutes of this first half remaining. In this first semi-final of Euro 2020. Sindric to the line. Better defending now by Norway. They close down Maric quickly. A little bit uh, slack early on. Happy to take the free throw, it would seem, because he went in rather half-heartedly, Karacic. Plays for Kielce in Poland. It's going to be a free throw, but there's a passive play call against the uh, Croatians. Maric comes out from the line, and it's a team timeout for Croatia. Discussion with Sindric. He's aching a bit. It's tough being a line player. Yes, guys, you can see the Rebellion are waiting to set the first goal for number six. We're going to set it at six. Two pivots. We have a pass now. It's not a pass from Diego Rupp, but after that, there's another one. And look at the result. It's not a pass. It's not a pass. I'm ready. It's not a pass. And wait for the chance. And the other one, you have to approach the zone. Go, go, go. So first team timeout of the game there, as we see some of the best moments and the toughest moments from uh, these uh, teams who've defended hard. That pass was so close to being intercepted by Yondal. And you saw briefly that uh, at the moment Croatia have outrun the uh, Norwegians, 11.9 kilometers as a team, 10.8 for Norway. So Stepancic, two goals so far for the 29-year-old. He was in Paris last year playing together with Sagerson. He is now at Kikzeged, top of the Hungarian league and 30 goals for them. Long range shot, that's straight through. Sindric, first of the game for the Barcelona playmaker. And a quick response. And that's Johannesson. He's just come on. He warmed up about 10 minutes ago and then was told, just wait, just wait, just wait. O'Sullivan's still staying. But now he's still being used in defense. We wish he could do a little bit more, Johannesson. He's on with O'Sullivan at the moment. We'll see if they switch on the next one. When Johannesson goes on, normally O'Sullivan then just gets used in defense. Gives a chance for Sagerson and Overby to be rested. Dunyak comes around, he's back in the attack. Karacic oh, looks for the uh, line. Two minutes suspension. Holding. And uh, Marino Maric, again the recipient. Got a lovely pass in. Karacic just dropping the ball as he went past him, but Bjornsson swivels him around. And both uh, team captains have now had a suspension in this game. Six minutes of the first half to go. Still Croatia lead by one. Dunyak. Oh, bullet! It actually took a bit of a deflection as well, which didn't help. Bergerud in goal, but they all count. 
comes back to Dunyak. Let's rip. And I think it may well have touched on the way through on uh, Gullerud. Well, that's said, 97 kilometers an hour. Didn't take too much of the pace off. And it certainly isn't one of his fastest. Two goal lead restored then. First goal of the game for Domagoj Dunyak. Tangen. That's the Norwegians lost. Uh, the uh, other first choice right back they had early on, Magnus Rød, the Flensburg right back who broke a bone in his foot a couple of matches ago. Had to be replaced. That's off the bar. Croatia break. Scored 30 fast breaks in this competition. Croatia, they don't hang around. Mind you, from 39 taken. That's a lot of misses on fast breaks, which uh, would count amongst those you shouldn't really be missing. So Dunyak is on, but has shifted left. Karacic in the centre, Stepancic comes around. Sindric, who may not be fully fit, he was uh, sat out against Spain. Nice breakthrough, Bergerud though makes save number five. We're well into the last five minutes of the first half. Gets through. Just got his hand on it. That was the uh, miss at the other end. In fact, it clipped both sides of the post for Gullerud. How unlucky is that? Four minutes to go in the first half. Bit of space. Oh, and again, clips two sides and stays out. Norwegians are getting a measuring tape out at the break. And just check, that's two by three. Lucky break. Although Shago has done his bit in goal with his five saves. Clips the post, clips the uh, crossbar and comes out. Shot efficiency, 58% for Croatia. It's just about par for them in the competition. 50% for Norway's below. They arrived here on 65. That's an attacking foul called against the line. O'Sullivan moves it forward very quickly. He's hanging back for space. Takes the shot. It's going to be a free throw. Never quite broke through. Three minutes to go. So interesting with Sagerson struggling to find solutions. He's been taken off. And so Tangen, O'Sullivan, and Johannesson across the back. I wouldn't exactly say he's uh, struggling, Sagerson, but uh, two goals from open play, two of them were penalties. Good save, Segal! Number six. There he is, uh, Sagerson on the bench, getting a bit of a breather. But on court, Croatia are having an excellent spell here. Johannesson, superbly read because he wouldn't have seen that come till the very last second. And that was going at 121 kilometers an hour. Fans love it. Segal's on fire. 60% save rate. Shake of the head by Johannesson, who scored 22 in the competition up until today. Well, when France and Denmark surprisingly exited the competition at the preliminary stage, Norway suddenly became hot favourites, but uh, there are no easy teams in this last four. Dunyak has also gone off again, Sindrich is back. Karacic, Stepancic at the back. Two minutes to go in the first half, tries to go around side, gets a free throw, shoots straight into Bergerud, it won't count as a save. They're playing, I would say, a little nervously today compared to the free-flowing handball we've seen from the Norwegians in the competition so far. Tried to drop it for the line, Karacic misconnected completely. Maric was nowhere near, back come Norway on the break. O'Sullivan. Managed to get the ball out, play on, says the referee then to give them the advantage. And O'Sullivan says, can we get the floor mop? Because where he was brought down, it's left a lot of sweat. A team timeout called by Norway. We need to fix a few things here, really. Okay, 
Ok, vi ska klara kommer det går. Well, you know, I've seen that amazing statistic on the passes. Croatia 352 passes, Norway 162. Now, yes, they have very quick attacks. They don't hang around in the attack. They move the ball up quickly. A lot of phase two attacks. But then Croatia have been uh, placed a lot more, moving it around, trying to break down the Norwegian defence, but that's still quite something. Two goal lead then, one and a half minutes of the first half remaining. The Croatian fans are in festive mood. The Norwegians are trying to look festive. Sagosen is back. So Johansson in the middle, it's O'Sullivan who's made way for him and Tangen at right back. Two in on the line, trying to make space for him, but immediately with this 5-1 defence that they put up against him, Dunyak moves across to get in the way. He'll slot in now. Doesn't take the shot, gives it to the line, that was lovely. Gullerud's second goal, a clever assist. They were expecting a hard shot. Sagerson came running in, lines up, passes it, and Stepancic had no idea where the ball had gone. So twice, Croatia have let a three-goal lead slip. We're well into the last minute before half-time. Croatia will look to make this the lead. Long attack and get the last word. Stepancic goes very wide. He'll come around, they'll do a switch with Horvat. Get a bit of momentum coming around the outside. Horvat, Karacic, here he comes now. Norwegians move up quickly to get in his path. 20 seconds to go, but passive play is called against Croatia. Six passes to get a shot away. That's used up a couple. Free throw and a marked improvement in the Norwegian defence since the opening. So, seconds tick, five seconds to go. Karacic, yes! Who else but Karacic to find Maric on the line? Fifth goal of the game. Well, well, well. So Croatians with 200 passes more than Norway in this half, as we see that last goal that's given them the two-goal lead. And they've actually run one and a half kilometers more. And that's to do with that big build-up that they do compared to the short attacks from Norway. So, good spell for the Croatians, who've twice led by three. Great emotion in the arena, as you always get with the Croatians. And at half time here in the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm, it's Norway 10, Croatia 12. So, are Croatia going to spoil Norway's party again after beating them at Euro 2016 in the bronze playoff? It has been a very entertaining first half. 57% of the Croatian attacks are working and they're shooting as well, which is marginally below par, but not enormously. For Norway, 45% of the attacks, that's well below par. They've not had that in this competition so far. And 44% on their shooting, well, well below par, nearly 20% below. Turnovers, two apiece, not been a lot. Three suspensions for Croatia and two for Norway so far in the game. And just one fast break for Croatia. And the Norwegians, we've actually had 23 in the competition, denied completely here as Croatia covered them quickly. Ball possession, again, 62% for Croatia, but that reflects the longer attacks, as does 415 passes to 201 for Norway, and that extra running distance of about one and a half kilometers. Hardest shot so far, it's pretty close between the two, 122, 121. Bjornsson, in fact, of all people, is the one with the fastest shot. For Norway. This is how it looked then. Croatia got the first word, then Norway got a couple of quick goals. It was nip and tuck, and then twice you see a rush of goals where the Croatians take a three goal lead, and then the uh, Norwegians come back. But in the last 10 minutes, they've been restricted to three goals, haven't been able to close that gap. Top scorers so far, Sagosen for Norway, although not looking at his best here today. Well, for Croatia, Maric is getting superb supply on the line from. Uh, Karacic, Sindric, and for that matter, Dunyak for his opening goal. 
So this is where the uh, shots went in. The green goals and the uh, crosses are misses. 50% efficiency. Well, we didn't get to see that, but we do know that the efficiency is very low. There it is. And look at the number of times they've clipped the bar. Two on the right, one on the left, four across the top. They're not quite framing them. It's close, but it's not close enough. Some of those middle green uh, dots, though, will be bouncers going in. But they're, uh, they've got to somehow frame them a little bit better because that metal work has seen a lot of action. So for Croatia, again, similar pattern in a way, left as they look at the goal, and then some bouncers there. They've hit the uh, crossbar three times in this first half. Some of the saves have been very good, though, by Bergerud. But uh, nine misses and 57% uh, uh, efficiency for the Croatians, which is uh, there or thereabouts for them. So in this semi-final, with a score at 12-10 to Croatia, we're going to take a break as well. Join us again in just a few moments for the second half. We'll see you then. So welcome back to the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm in Sweden and this first semi-final of the Men's European Handball Championships. And at half-time, Croatia are leading Norway 12-10. It has been a very tight first half where uh, Croatia at one point opened up a three-goal lead. Each time, though, the Norwegians managed to come back and they were within one at the end. When Gullerud scored, only for Maric to score pretty much on the buzzer and he's scored five from five. An impeccable record. He's getting great service in the back line. And he's just in the right place all the time, the Melsungen line player. For Sagerson, not having his best day, four from seven, but two of them are penalties, so it's actually two from five in open play shooting. Croatia's defence is causing them the problems, and it's really isolating the two sides of the attack and not allowing the crossovers. And that man there, six saves, a 55% save rate to match his shirt number. The is on five saves. So Croatia throw off the second half of this first semi-final of Euro 2020, leading Norway 12-10. Quick stop. I mean, the clock didn't quite engage as it should have done. And quickly spotted Oscar Aloy just coming over to the table to check. Great atmosphere here in the arena. 19,000 seats it's been set up for for this uh, Euro 2020 final weekend. So play does now resume. Croatia two goal lead. And now with possession to start the second half. They've been chopping and changing at the back. Dunyak has got a bit of a good long range shot on him, but being changed with Karacic and uh, Sindric, who offer a bit of pace and have been great at finding the line as well. And that started rather well. Great reaction. So, Johannesson resumes for Norway. Sagerson coming on. And Tangen has stayed on the right back. O'Sullivan. Defensive work at the moment. Johansson's got a good shot on him, but this defence is causing problems. They like to cross and they like to come across each other and open up the defences, but uh, with Dunyak at the front, it's a lot more difficult. That's good, though. Found the way through. Tangen. 127 and a half kilometres an hour, that was. Second goal of the game. For Skjern in Denmark. Can go 
free throw. Stepancic scored a couple in the first half. Plays for Pixeged now, two meters and three tall, 105 kilos. Big presence at the back, here he comes now. Tries to take the shot, well blocked. And in fact, O'Sullivan's won that as an attacking foul. Look to pass to the wing, well covered. They are streaming back so quickly, Croatia. Clearly, they know the danger on fast breaks in phase two. Nothing given. Play on, say the Spanish referees. And that's suiting the Croatians very nicely here. Shego. Released. Let's have a look and see. Well, I just said he's got someone right under his feet. He can't jump towards the middle. And although it was probably not deliberate, it slipped. And Playfield agreed didn't get he's still remonstrating Yondal at the bottom of the picture. I've got some sympathy with him. Two on the line now for Croatia. Dunjak. Stepancic. Might use some of the space there. That was another wicked shot by Dunjak, all flicked in the wrist. 120 kilometers an hour, but misses the goal. Boos from the uh, Croatians fans, trying to give a bit of a home feel for uh, their team and unsettle the Norwegians. Looks for the uh, wing. Again, the defence, they move up so quickly, they try and get those short run-ins, taking the front defender, move across the court, but they're not giving very much at all, the Croatians, in that respect. That's gone through, though. Hard work, but got there in the end. Tangen. Little windmill feint. He goes past Mandic, should have probably given away penalty anyway had he not scored. It's a one-goal game again, Berger's happy. Three goals for Tangen. And that's a good rate as well by his standards. 60% success rate, which is good for a back player. Came into the match on 38% though. Little hand around there, Horvat coming in at the back. Horvat again. I'm trying to draw the defence forwards and it works in the end. An attacking foul and the break is on. Yes, two goals in 30 seconds. Karacic and then Mandic. Blow for the Norwegians. O'Sullivan runs through Dunyak. He says, give me the ball. But Mandic is already away and he's seen him. Big blow for Norway. The Croatians know it. Five minutes played and that three goal lead is back again. Mandic's second goal on the uh, fast break. No way through. Sagerson gives the ball away. Three of them are streaming forwards. Oh, brilliant save by Bergerud and Karacic. He's setting things up nicely with three assists to the line, but his shooting's not quite there. Three from seven now. That was a golden opportunity to really press home the advantage. And I dare say that Mandic might be feeling I should have taken the ball and done it myself. Bergerud's sixth save of the game. No way through there. Sagerson trying to find the line, stolen, but he's being held. That's a free throw. It was always a free throw. Tough defending by uh, Zeliko Musa. Musa. Now they hit back. Gap is back to just two goals. We've got Anja Hannesson. 
And on this occasion, goalkeeper committed himself slightly. Shego started going down, and that, the top corner was begging for that second goal of the game for Johansson. Ironically, uh, Musa, who's been used in defence very effectively by Croatia, his club teammates, as I mentioned earlier, at Magdeburg in Germany, with O'Sullivan, who's propping up the centre of the Norwegian defence. And number 24, nearly there, went through, but an infringement. O'Sullivan frustrated, but Marino Maric is having a fantastic game. Playing his third European Championship. He wasn't picked for the Euro two years ago, he was on the long list but eventually came in for Buntic in match four. Hence his third Euro. Bergerud, a little uh, fist pump there as uh, shot was taken. Relatively easy save, 80 kilometers an hour. Karacic never got enough power on it, his shootings. Heading south fast, it's two from eight now for Karacic. He did pick up a knock and was reported as injured the other day, but... Uh, Hanger and to the line, Gullerud. Third goal of the game for Gullerud, and young fans are on their feet. Well, he was in acres of space because Mandic had just moved up, unfortunately, thinking, well, I'm going on the break now, we've got the interception coming. Gullerud scores. And suddenly Norway edge back again. They keep on coming back, but they are having to do all the chasing at the moment. Croatia just keep the initiative. Twice they've opened up a three-goal lead. Attacking foul. Both teams have ability to soak up pressure. But interestingly, as far as uh, Norway are concerned, the only team that's uh, really, really pushed them meaningfully were France in the preliminary stage when they... Uh, Norway won 28-26, a match France had to win to stay in the competition. They only lost by three to Sweden, but in fairness, win controlled that game all the time. It was a very strange affair. Tangen comes around. So, uh, other than that, really, the Norwegians have had fairly comfortable wins in the competition. This is the first time after France in the uh, opening round that they're really being put under pressure and they're having to chase. Croatia, for their part, I've had a few, but they're level. 15-12 becomes 15-all. Sagerson tees the ball down quickly, goes to the other side, and Tangan, who's really finding the mark well here today. Fourth goal, and with that, Croatia call a team timeout. Tangan can celebrate. So Sheva can get himself really worked up sometimes, very calm on that occasion as Zoivin Tangent scores. Impressively, you see a little earpiece there being worn by uh, Christian Berger. It's because he suffers from uh, tinnitus. Not really the environment to be in with uh, 19,000 screaming fans. He has a quick word with Sagerson. He has come on in the second half, but uh, for the moment is uh, not coming on. So, uh, 10 minutes played and a three goal run. This is Norway level again. Croatians, though, they have had some real pressure situations. They were four down against uh, Germany in a group match with 40 minutes uh, of the match played, and that's going to be a Croatian ball. A little smile from Maric. <laughs> I'm not giving this back. It's mine. There was the uh, fall, and... Uh, yeah, I think fair to say, and that's gone straight through. Shot low. 
Dunyak comes back on. He's on in defence at the moment now, right up at the front. It's his second goal. In fact, that was the fastest shot of the game. We just saw Dunyak scoring at 128 kilometres an hour, but uh, Norway hit back. And who else but their star, Sander Sagerson, goal number five. Under pressure, Croatians are saying, oh, he bundled him over. Just bounced awkwardly, Shigel misread it. So Bjornsson, the uh, fastest shot in the uh, first half, 122. It's not always what you expect from the winger. Goalkeeper is out for Croatia. Ah, oh, saved! Bergerud. With that faster shot, accolade is now. With Dunyak, penalty fouled in the act of shooting. There may be more to come. Mamic looks anxiously because he's already on a two-minute suspension. There was contact. Lino Sherva goes into theatrical mode. Let's have a look again. Yes, he clipped his foot. Their two feet collide just on the takeoff, and that's enough. It may not have been intended, but that's not the point. There was contact, but Mamic is off, and that's a blow for Croatia. His second suspension, one more, and he'd be red carded. Sagerson for his third penalty. Shigo, who still only saved one in the competition. And Sagerson scores. And suddenly, after being behind for so long, Norway edge in front. He jumped, and as he went back down again, just put it over his shoulder. It's a game of cat and mouse, who makes who move first. Goalkeeper jumped, and Sagerson helped himself. Standing shot, that was 116 kilometers an hour. Bogalun there, great player in his day. Scored uh, nearly 400 goals for Norway. Whispering in Christian Berger's ear, if indeed you can whisper in this atmosphere. So with that suspension still being served out, they've taken out their goalkeeper, put on the extra attacker. Dunyak goes down heavily. Dunyak, the most experienced player for Croatia, came here with 202 internationals. Is working like a Trojan. Meanwhile, there is Borgalund on the left. He's uh, talking to Sagosen. Done a great job. Borgalund with uh, Christian Berger. It's a nice combination between the two. So still the empty goal. Bit of space on the right if they want to go. Oh, right up in the corner. Brilliantly done. Dunyak. Given a little bit too much space. You've got to come up and close on him. Bergerud was unlucky because he actually got his forearm on it. Deflects it up into his own goal. Oh dear. Dunyak, who just got one in the first half, is uh, starting to find some way through now. It's 17 all, a very low scoring semi final. It's been about big defense and also some uh, shooting not quite on target. Didn't fully turn. Break is on. Straight through the keeper, Matanovic. First goal of the game for the 24 year old playing in his first major competition for Croatia. The Guarinje Valenje winger was off like a rocket. Into the line, attacking foul, and Norway having a bad spell here. Christian Berger can't believe it. Call going against Gullerud. They have defended so well, though, I have to say, the uh, Croatians in the game here today. Alternated it well, and the fans are really loving it. It's not quite there yet, though. We've got over 15 minutes remaining, and I think this uh, semi-final has got quite a few twists and turns to come. Suspension served out for Croatia. 
Looking for the line. Oh, it's gone wide, but he was fouled. O'Sullivan goes straight away. Yep, that's me. And that's a penalty. They're all claiming a two-minute suspension against O'Sullivan. It's not given. Christian Berger has got himself a yellow card, meanwhile, for arguing with the referees. So Berger, who's saved four from 17 in the competition, up against Dunyak, who scored all four of his. Ah, he flinched. Bergerud tried not to jump first. In the end, he moved to the right, or his right. Dunyak just put it the other way. And so after briefly leading Norway by just one goal, once more it's turned around. Little hand off, long range shot, that's a bullet. Got on Johansson. And Heinkin steps up to applaud him together with William Orr, the newcomer to the team. Shago was going the right way, but just wasn't getting near the corner. So one goal game all over again. Horvat there, trying to isolate him in the wing. What about the uh, second most experienced player in the team with 173 internationals, 541 goals before this Euro. Behind Dunyak. That's a free throw. And uh, that's not good. Oh, Johannesson has caught the uh, winger, Zlatko Horvat. Knee in the thigh, he's dead legged him. He felt that. Johansson gets a two-minute suspension. And still down getting treatment. Uh, there won't be an injury rule for him if they can get him back up and playing, if he's fit to play, as uh, Johansson looks on. Because although he did get treatment on court, if the player that uh, there was a foul against you to cause that injury, then the uh, missing the next three attack rule doesn't apply, and Horvat will stay on. It's interesting, he's playing at the right-back position in a play they used in the first half. Part of the problem for them, though, is they've only got Stepancic as a left-handed right-back. Berger, who comes off better that time. Now Berger who pulls off a big save and how important that could be. Eighth of the game for him as Dunyak looks on. Poker faced. Sagerson with some relief. urging the fans on all the time. Empty goal for Norway while they've got that suspension running for Johannesson. It's already uh, down to about 55 seconds. Sagerson's in the middle now as Sullivan is on. Quick player, he'll look for gaps. Free throw. And goes down, but seems to be all right. Around comes Yondal as a second line player. Good defence. You can see how they're stopping this flow at the back of the attack for Norway. Hence, they're going for short, quick attacks. Steal, unfair, say the referees. Arm taken. And disappointment for the fans. I have to say, Dunyak in defence. What a beast he is. He's a great, great player. You're going to chalk down your... Uh, seven players for this Euro. Surely he's got a feature on that. So with that man, mind you, although Sagerson today has been kept very quiet. That's well blocked, but he's come back out on the rebound. Oh, try to get, but there's a little push in the back on O'Sullivan. He says, should it not be more? I got pushed while I was jumping for the ball, Horvat. 
the experienced hand comes out to uh, say, like, come on, decision's over. He wasn't in control of the ball. But uh, there was most definitely a push in the back, and I think the two-minute call is, uh, is warranted, but not given. Dry smile there from Oscar Aloui, the uh, Spanish referee. Play on. Ah, oh, well, that makes it all right then. Sander Sagerson with another missile that was just shy of 122 kilometers an hour. Hangs in the air. They're trying to cover him. But he finds the corner. Fourth goal from open play for him in the match. The other three coming from the seven-meter line. And so it's all square once more in this semi-final. It's so nicely poised, looking for the line. A lot of holding going on. Overview back in. Overview who plays for Erlangen in Germany. Moved there last summer. Trying to put the block on the line. Ooh, caught on the arm, more trouble for Norway. And I think Tangen may have caught the arm as he went through. Is it? No, it's Overbut. Well, he's also on two two-minute suspension. So Tangen, they've let off. But for this touch here, just that little there, because if when you pull back, it can really hurt the shooter. You're putting so much effort into that extension and pull through. Overbu is off, and that's the conundrum now. Norway, then he just put him back on again. Then he gets his second suspension. It's a power play for Croatia, got to make it count. Another passive play call against them, didn't to worry too much. There was so much space on the right wing. Matanovic with his second of the game, the 24-year-old newcomer. Arrived here at the European Championships with just nine goals and three international matches under his belt. Dummies the shot over the top. Goes under the arm. Matanovic, who plays in Slovenia for Gorenje Valenje. So, goalkeeper is out. Oh, some venom in that. Johannesson. He's uh, just taken over the fastest uh, mantle with that one, 128.6 kilometers an hour. That was just a blur for Shigo in goal. Ten minutes to go, all square. Long attack by the uh, Croatians, which we've seen, which is why they've got so many more passes in this game. They take their time, they build up, they tease, they try and pull the defence one way, then the other. They work patiently. Karacic. Yes, Horvat. Lovely supply. Had to make that pass. Millimetre perfect than he did because there was a defensive hand sneaking out there. Horvat goes through, goal number three. And still Norway have to do the chasing. What a great, great player he is, Horvat. He's had pretty much all his uh, playing career for Zagreb. In the sixth European Championship, Horvat. And it's going to be a two-minute suspension. Lino Sherva doesn't agree. Let's have a look and see his uh, wrist stitch. Catches Sagerson, he's got him around the neck. Although he lets go, any kind of holding around the neck will have you in trouble. Uh, Musa has a quick word for him, the experienced hand. Musa, who's played over 125 internationals. Wrist stitch, who played just one before arriving here. Croatia, who won their qualification group ahead of uh, Switzerland, Serbia and Belgium to come here. Sagerson returns into the fray. That's the fifth two-minute suspension. Well, he decided not to go in, Yondal. It's interesting because there was a bit of space, but they've got the extra player. 
Want to be sure of it. Oh, right in the corner. Sagerson is starting to find his mojo. This Delberger applauds. Goes around. Hammers that one in. 122, just shy on the speed. But so well placed. So Croatia take out the goalkeeper. Levels things up in the attack. Horvat tries to go through, releases Dunyak. Tang and they're trying to get the uh, attacking foul called against Dunyak. Nothing given except a free throw and a wry smile and a handshake between Maric and Uverbu, both line players, of course. They know it's difficult there and they know you've got to take a bit of stick. Comes with the turf. Oh, catches Gullerud with his arm on the way through. 42nd on a power play now for Norway. They've got to make it count. Berger threw himself at Gullerud there, thought he was going to run on too early. There it is. Klatz crashed into his head. Bit of space now. The wingers are waiting very, very wide, trying to get a bit of space. And despite being short handed, Dunyak still rushes forward, changing goal as Matej Yashanin has replaced Shego. Ball is stolen. Well, short handed or not. Bergerud saves, spares their blushes. Tenth save of the game. Sagerson into the line, Gullerud, and that's a costly mistake. Bergerud save directly leads to a goal at the other end for Gullerud. And for only the second time in this half, a lead for Norway. Tried to go underneath, he read it, closed his legs quickly. Sagerson came back quickly, draws the defence. Job finished. Well, poor old Ashanin, who's literally just gone in goal about 50 seconds ago, straight on the receiving end. Suspension is over, back to full strength. Ah, oh, ball's gone inside and a slip by Croatia. They've got to stay focused here. Mandic. And poor old Sindric looks on from the bench. Barcelona playmaker been used for just 21 minutes in the game and you get the sense that uh, he did have that injury early in the competition I'm not sure that he or for that matter Karacic may be fully fit team timeout Norway it's nicely poised here See the uh, number of passes there again. I mean, the uh, different styles of the two teams. As we watch that Bergerud save, that should have been a one-goal lead for Croatia, but Karacic denied. And thanks to that save, Norway take the lead. Experienced hand, Domagoj Dunyak. We've been there, we've, we've been in tough situations. Keep your heads. Six minutes to go in the first semi-final of Euro 2020. Tangan in the middle, he'll switch back with Johannesson. Dunyak again, right up at the front of the defence. Sagerson goes in, looks for the line. Penalty! Well, it's the money time and suddenly they're delivering. That is Espen Christiansen who jumps to his feet, the second goalkeeper on the Norway bench today. He was, uh, came in two matches ago for Sivaros, who's got a stomach bug. And there was the uh, turn and the celebration as he gets up by Uwebu. Christian Berger risking him despite his 2-2 minute suspension. Sagerson still has to score it. Oh, off the head! Ashanin, who'd saved just one from ten at this European competition, makes a save, not that he knew a huge amount about it. In fact, it's off the shoulder. 
but it does help when you're two meters and six tall. So a chance to put a bit more pressure on Croatia goes missing and Horvat will be pleased to see that he's being pushed back into the right wing now as uh, Stepancic returns. He used for 38 minutes the number seven at the bottom of the picture. Five minutes to go, and they've taken out the goalkeeper. Seven against six. They use that quite a bit, and it pays dividends straight away. They're managing to get Ashan in back in again. Dunyak. Fifth goal. Well, this will not have come as a surprise, seven against six, because Croatia have used this before, taking out their goalkeeper when they're not short-handed to have the attack advantage, two on the line, it keeps the defence busy and allows those shots to come in. Johannesson, Tangen, and they're having to go out, break their run and move out all the time because of this deep defence, which Croatia has played superbly. Attacking foul, Tangen. Christian Berger looks on rather anxiously. Goes in with his shoulder. Good call. Empty goal again, seven against six. Is this medal finally going to come Croatia's way? After three bronze and two silver. Three and a half minutes to go. It's all square. Dunyak, dummies to the line. Šipić is on the line. Oh, yes! Straight through! The line players constantly working to try and pull defenders wide and leave that space down the middle. Dunyak, not even a particularly quick shot. What an amazing talent he is. He just sees the gap and uh, Bergerud reacts a little too late. 112 kilometers an hour, that was. And once again, Croatia have the initiative here. Norway are doing the chasing. If it ends up level at the end of normal time, we'll have two times five minutes of extra time. It's blocked. Penalty defending inside the area. And is there more to come? Two minutes suspension against Stepancic. He looks very surprised. There was the uh, teeing up. And as he tried to cut back through, Johannesson is brought down. He dummied the shot there. That committed the first defender. And they jump into him, and that's where they've got into trouble. And so it means seven against six can't be used now for the next two minutes. And by the time they get uh, that player back, Stepancic, they will only be about 30 seconds remaining. Yondal then steps up after the earlier miss by Sagosen, and he misses two! Two penalty saves! And well, mighty milk the applause. 26-year-old Ashanin with only seven international matches under his belt. Picked for the team for his first Euro, and he's made two absolutely crucial saves. One that could have given Norway a two-goal lead and that that could have brought them level again. While his team is short-handed into the last two minutes. Goalkeeper is out, but they're just at parity now, Croatia. Incredible scenes. Down goes uh, Dunyak, and that's fine. He's trying to run the clock down. It's quite deliberate. He looks up. One and a half minutes to go. Kind of pressure that Norway haven't really felt in this competition. And maybe that's to their disadvantage. The French did uh, take the lead late in the uh, second half in that uh, preliminary round match. But Croatia, they've had a few uh, tight encounters. Draw with uh, Spain, the one goal win against Germany. And one goal against the Czech Republic. Passive play has been called against Croatia. One and a half minutes to go, and the clock has been stopped. 
Well, Norway, this was their big chance with Denmark and France out of the way, but they knew this was going to be a tough battle. And that man there, Ashanin, with two penalty saves. One he may not have known too much about, the other that was excellent, has uh, put his team within uh, touching distance of a final. Six passes they've got, and they've used up quite a few of them already. Dunyak looks at the clock, it's still ticking down. We're inside one minute and 15. Tries the long range shot. And that's uh, Bergerud's ball. Back they come again. Just picked up a bit of dirt on the way through. There's a lot of sticky on his hand. Or is he hurt himself, I wonder. We're into the last minute, though. Croatia short-handed for another 25 seconds. Sagerson looks for the line. Free throw only. Ten more seconds before Croatia back to full strength. Sagerson into the wing this time, Yondal, yes, sneaks it in on the near post, it's all square again, but there's time now for Croatia to have the last word and they're at full strength. Team timeout, Croatia. Well, if you wanted suspense, you've come to the right place, Dunyak and his teammates. Being held 23 all here. A very calm demeanor. Sadali Lidlsheva can get quite worked up. There was the equalizer by Yondal. He missed the penalty earlier. Fans can't quite believe it, but they have possession. You could still be there. Twenty-one seconds for Croatia to break Norwegian hearts here and take themselves into the semi-final, or will it be extra time? Goalkeeper is out. They throw caution to the wind and go seven against six. O'Sullivan is there. Four seconds. That's blocked, it's extra time. It'll be two times five minutes. They never quite teed themselves up to have space. Dunyak drops his head. But whatever play they had, they never broke down the Norwegian defence on that occasion. Well, 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 Dunyak has played a Herculean job out there. He really has six goals from 10 shots, two assists. But there was the uh, closing seconds. Didn't quite seem to realize, dummy the shot. And in the end, I think it was O'Sullivan who uh, came across here and threw himself, was it? No, ouch, actually that's rather her. Tangen threw himself into the path of the ball. He scored a few of those long range efforts. There was a bit of a gap, but Tangen got in the way. So at the end of uh, regular time, it's all square here in the Tele2 Arena in Stockholm. 23 all. Sander Sagerson on eight goals, looking cool as a cucumber. It's only a five minute break before they resume, two times five minutes with a uh, effectively a straight change at, uh, at the break. Well, this match has been so nicely poised, but it's Croatia who twice had a three-goal lead, but just couldn't capitalize on it. Shego, who started well in goal with eight saves and 24, it was interesting that Ashanin was brought in initially, but it paid dividends because he saved two penalties. So uh, he didn't manage to save anything from open play, and there was that injury that he picked up right at the end. 
and uh, they'll need to patch him up. He can't have a blood injury on court, which is exactly what they're doing at the moment. Bergerud, who is on 10 saves, a 31% save rate. So everyone uh, busies themselves around. We've still got about two and a half minutes to go before the uh, throw off of this period. And it's uh, shades of that semi final at the World Championships in France in 2017. On that occasion, as I mentioned earlier, Horvat had a penalty in the dying seconds to give uh, Croatia their place in the final, and he missed. And uh, Norway went on to win 28 25 in extra time. They lost the final to host France. Just as they had two years earlier, lost uh, that final that they reached as well in uh, Denmark to the Danes. And Dunyak, it's all a little bit too much for him. But he's got to refocus his mind. Sheva trying to uh, energize his players. Forget it, whatever's gone is gone now. You've got to start again. It's two times five minutes. There you go, he's back up again. All set, six goals so far. Dunyak, he's played 51 minutes. I mean, the workload on these players is enormous. If you think of the uh, drives they're doing to the defence, the contact they have, picking themselves up again, going again. Christiansen is warming up in goal for Norway. But I uh, suspect that might just be to do with that injury to the hand. Is it more serious than we think? They're still trying to uh, get a bit of uh, ice on it. He's already got his thumb strapped up. The uh, oh, physio's hands are shaking more than uh, Bergerud's. <laughs> Bergerud smiles. Well, what drama we've had though. Twice three goal leads, but Norway came back. Norway just once had a very brief one goal lead. They could have made it two. Sagerson missed the penalty. But then again, the Croatians could also put the pressure on. Karacic was denied on a fast break. Uh, he's got to put it all out of his mind. Clear, clear your mind. Little exchange there between Bjornsson and Maric at the halfway uh, line. Exchanging pleasantries. And we're just about ready to throw off the first period of extra time. And if if it's still level after this uh, extra time of two times five minutes, we'll have another two times five minutes. After that, it goes to penalties. Right, hang on to your hats. Here we go. So Croatia throw off this first period of extra time, two times five minutes after Norway battle their way back into the game and managed to uh, level things off at 23 all. Croatia failing to score on their last attack. 61% success rate with their shooting Norway, still below their 65% average coming into the game while uh, Croatia on 56%, which is pretty much the same they had at half time. Dummies to the uh, line, nothing through there. Around comes Stepancic. Passive plays, now been called! And that'll help. It's such a short spell that the goals just put extra pressure on the team. Dunyak, goal number seven. Bergerud. He uh, does tend to blow hot and cold, but he's mostly been very, very hot at this championship. He's been extremely good. Some great saves in this game today, but has struggled with some of the long range shooting. Sagerson! Well, Dunya cornered him, prevented him making the pass, and in the end, Sagerson almost had no option but to take the shot. And Dunya so frustrated, it goes straight over the heads, or the head, I should say, of Marin Shigel, who's gone back in goal for Ashanin. Straight back off, not being used in defence. Sindrich 
been used sparingly as well in the game. 21 minutes after making a brisk start for them. Tries to go through the legs. Inside anyway, says the referee. Wouldn't have counted. And back come Norway. So Sullivan is there, but they're waiting to uh, make the change. There it is. Yondal probably had a little uh, heart-stopping moment when the whistle went, but he did nothing, didn't touch. He got there first, marked his spot and waited. They thought they might have got something for that. Stepanchik though, gets nothing. Bergerud is relieved. Has to go through free throw. And the ball off, long range shot blocked in the wall. And now Croatia had possession. Musa heads off, job done. Club teammate with uh, Norway's O'Sullivan at Magdeburg, who's going to have the bragging rights when they go home. Two minutes left of this first period of extra time. Karacic, amazing playmaker he is. And uh, he's been on the entire, pretty much the entire time, actually. Well, he had about two or three minutes off. That's it. Dunyak clips the bar, still in play. The rebound comes kindly for Croatia. Looks at the line, it's covered this time. Overbu is uh, trying to stay with Maric. Into the wing, Horvat, no space there, passive play is now being called against them. In a long attack. Shot taken, this time it's picked up. O'Sullivan looks for a quick long pass, but there's no one free. Johannesson. Bergerud with 12 saves so far, 34% save rate. In on the line goes Gullerud. Sagerson returns to the attack. Johansson starts at the left back position. Tees up, trying to make a bit of space for Tang, and he just couldn't quite do it. He needed to take off straight away and take that shot. And about 20 seconds of this period of extra time left. They'll try and keep this and make it a late shot. Passive play called against them. Sagerson, no way through, ball is released, play on, they've got to get a shot through, and that's it, six passes, weren't paying attention, Dunyak wants to move the ball up quickly, intercepted, and that's the end of the first period of extra time, and they are still all square here in Stockholm. Sullivan taking a blow in that last uh, exchange, Christian Berger. There was that crash. Oh, he crashed his head onto uh, Dunyak's knee. Right there. So they'll change sides very quickly now and resume. And they still cannot separate themselves. Just a few seconds for the coaches. One goal apiece only in this uh, extra time. That was a good save by Bergerud. His 12th of the game off Dunyak. Ball possession, 58% Croatia, 42% Norway. 
As I said earlier, that is more a reflection of the fact that the Croatians do play these long attacks. They build up slowly. They try and pull the defence from side to side and open it up. The Norwegians tend to want a quick attack, get down there, especially if they can do it in phase two. But otherwise, they don't hang around for the uh, shots. They try and open you up very quickly. So Gullerud. And here we go then with the second period of extra time. Shego still in goal. This will be training on the Norwegians who've got quite a few players who haven't been turned into the game. They're just too inexperienced for this kind of pressure situation into the line. No one there. Now Croatia had possession. Four and a half minutes to go. Christian Berger can't believe it. That was a poor pass. The line player wasn't there and he knows it. And... Uh, in these periods of extra time, those mistakes are compounded because you just don't have much time to make amends. Stepancic, Karacic, Dunyak across the back. In on the line, the impressive Maric. He scored five from seven, scored five in the first half. Oh, yes! They know how dangerous he is. He's got a huge shot on him, Stepancic. Third goal of the game. that faster shot 131 kilometers an hour he's chosen a good moment to do it ah quick response Sagerson 10th goal of the game as I said they don't hang around that was three passes you can see at the other end there were so many more Sego went the wrong way and that goes in at 128 and a half kilometers an hour. It's actually the second fastest of the game. They're launching rockets here. So who can hold on to the nerves that little bit better and hang on for an epic win here in Stockholm. Not been a high scoring game. Oh, an attacking foul. It may have been against Maric. Oh, he's managed to take the ball. Bjornsson and the captain scores. His first goal of the game. What a moment to do it. Sherva remonstrates about the original decision for the turnover. Eighth turnover. And that ball so close to being intercepted, but Bjornsson just snatches it out of the air one-handed. He's missed his first two shots. Hart probably in his mouth, Berger on the line as he watched him take it. They've taken out the goalkeeper again. Seven against six. Straight through. Oh, in the face. Berger goes down. In his defence, Stepancic was being fouled in the act of shooting. Not really able to control the shot that much. There's the shove by Johansson. That's 97 kilometers an hour. That's going to hurt. Poor old Bergerud. And uh, Norway won't be wanting to lose him. Stepancic, who you can't blame really, as I said, he was pushed in the act of shooting. He comes in to apologize. It's never nice for the goalkeeper, but when it's just shy of 100 kilometers an hour, it hurts. But. Uh, to Norway's uh, relief, it's just going to be a free throw, and uh, believe it or not, Bergerud stays in. They just can't afford to take him out, but uh, he's here sharp. Two minutes to go. Seven against six, they take now the goalkeeper, Dunyak. Stepancic. Karacic waits, looks to the wing, Horvat! Side netting. Oh, a huge chance now for Norway with a minute and a half to go. There it was, he went in. Sagerson planted himself, that's all I'm giving you. No foul, say the referees. Dunyak, I think, thought maybe there was motion on the defender. Sagerson was uh, moving. At the point of impact, the referees say no, and they were right there. 
One and a half minutes, and if Norway score now, it will be huge pressure on Croatia. The poor Croatians who've had so much of the game. They're pushing right up in defence, they've got to now. Gularud at the back, second line goes in, O'Sullivan. Passive players now being called against them as we go into the last minute. Foul on Sagerson, free throw. They'll be checking how many passes they've got left. Because there's plenty of time if they miss here, you've got 55 seconds, 56 at the moment. Well, the tension is palpable in the arena. There was that long-range effort earlier. 128 and a half kilometers an hour, but it'll count for nothing if they can't score here and uh, Croatia come back. Tangen, no way through, and surely they've used almost all their six passes. They need to get something big in here. Sagerson. It's going to be a pass and shot, surely now. That's another free throw. And they're asking the referee, and it seems to be Angel Sabroso just said one. A pass and a shot. Croatians will uh, pull in because they know that, unless, of course, the uh, Norwegians don't have a big wall. From this angle here, Tangen may be slightly better off. Blocked by the wall. Passive play, and when he picks it up, and passes it back down, that'll probably be it. So he's got to go all the way, takes the shot, runs the clock down. 25 seconds for Croatia to come back and take this game to another period of extra time. Breathless, seven against six again, goalkeepers out. Eight seconds, they've got to get a shot in. Into the line, penalty! On the buzzer, Maric gets the penalty, Dunyak the supply. Well, remember that at the World Championships in France, three years ago, they had a penalty in regular time to win the match. Here it is again, Dunyak gets the ball in, defenders are inside, Gullerud clearly steps in. So, the fate of of their final place for Norway now rests in the hand of Torbjorn Bergerud, the goalkeeper. You can talk as much as you like, Sagerson. They won't change. Dunyak scored one already. This for another period of extra time. He's got it. And the drama continues. 26 all. Croatian fans are in heaven. Tried really not to commit, but in the end he did. He moves his leg up, and the moment he does it, Dunyak shoots underneath. You can almost see him trying to hold off and make Dunyak shoot first. They had their chance, Norway. A one-goal lead and possession, but couldn't score as Croatia defended superbly, ran the clock down on them, and then some flans, it's just too much for them. Oh dear, <laughs> well, I hope you're enjoying it. What a game this has turned out to be. Dunyak absolutely drained, 61 minutes on court. So many of them are. It was Mandic. And he's played all but about a minute and a half of the game. Well, quite a lot of the Croatian fans seem to be in tears here. They are so desperate to make it to a final and win this title that has eluded them so often. For Norway, they got close just once in 2016 when, of course, they lost in the semi-final. So did Croatia on that occasion, but it was Croatia who beat them for the bronze medal. Well, the Norwegian fans seem a little bit more composed about things as it appears as if Norway might be looking to bring in Reinkin in place of Tangen. Well, Gullerud there, who stepped in and gave away that last penalty. Well, he didn't have a huge amount of options. It was literally three seconds away from them, the Norwegians. That's how tight it was at the end. 
They kept them out until three seconds. Horvat, the 35-year-old, oldest player in the team, who has uh, invested so much in this match and who's been on court for 56 minutes. About three minutes before this uh, second uh, session of extra time throws off. And if they're still level at the end of that, then it goes to penalties. Both teams will have five penalties. Sagerson deep in his own zone there with 10 goals and a 67% success rate. Top scoring, as we kind of suspected he would. And Dunyak there having a word in his ear. From Igor Vori, he scored nearly 600 goals for Croatia in his time. And the two of them were long-time national teammates until Igor Vori announced his uh, retirement, the line player. And today, Maric has done incredibly well. Well, the uh, Croatians have had slightly the better of it for a lot of the game, certainly in regular time, when they made the Norwegians chase them all the time. But in uh, this period of extra time, Norwegians uh, went behind in the first period, but in the second period, then they had the advantage. Mamic getting ready to go back on again. Dunyak heading on court, and it's going to be a Norwegian possession to start this uh, second period of extra time. Bergerud, who took a ball in the face at 97 kilometers an hour in the closing stages. Oh, that's a nice touch. Croatian and Norwegian fans together. It's all about the sport. Maric, what a game he's had. Five from seven, although missed both his shots in the second half, but importantly, he won the penalty that got them level and uh, denied Norway a place in the final on Sunday. Shego then focused He's made eight saves, 30% save rates. Not quite had as good a second half either. So, Gullerud will uh, resume. And the fans looking for some kind of inspiration from anywhere else that they can get it to help them get over the finish line. has been a fantastic atmosphere. 19,000 fans in the Tele2 Arena here in Stockholm in Sweden. Sad, of course, their team didn't make it through to the last four. It was a big ask for them. But are being entertained here with a uh, spectacular semi-final between these two great countries. Here we go. A bit of a delay. It's not going to help the nerves much. Here we go, then Norway throw off this second period of overtime with Croatia. 26 all here. What a work rate this been. A nice little handshake there between Dunjak and Sagerson. Croatians, who believe it or not, are on 999 passes in this game. They're one shy of a thousand. I guess the other two teams in the other semi-final will be licking their lips at this one, saying they're going to get nice and tired. Good save! Shigo. They don't make them very long attacks, the Norwegians, but that one is parried away. Tangen, reasonably well placed, but Shego read it all the way, and there was that little handshake at the start. As I said earlier, the two will be club teammates in Kiel in Germany next season. Distance has run. Croatia, a couple more kilometers, 35.3 kilometers than the Norwegians. 
So a chance for them to go in front. It counts for a lot in these short spells of extra time that you have the psychological advantage of making the other team chase you. And they're going to be nicely tired. Luckily, they've got a day off tomorrow, these teams. Good play. Passive play's been called against them. They need to get a shot. Stepanchi shoots down the middle but gets a free throw. Still passive play. Stepanchi seems to be saying, don't give it to me. You have a go. Mamic has a look. Long range shot. That's an attacking foul. Stepanchi can't quite believe it. Same as in the first half, O'Sullivan did well to stop there because Stepancic was creeping up behind him. There's the uh, attack straight into Sagosan, just waited and uh, took the hit. Into the wing, closed angle, it's gone in! Yondo! Third goal of the game. In fact, second, I'm getting ahead of myself. It wasn't a big angle, but he cut towards the middle to open it up. And that Shego went out. And off into the line. That's going to be given. Would have been a penalty anyway. There was defending inside the area. And that is Marino Maric. Free throw. Into the last two minutes of this first period of extra time. Dunyak not being used in defence at the moment, neither is Maric. Musa, centre of the defence, two metres tall, 114 kilos. Turnover and the break is on, Horvat cuts to the middle and scores and Croatia back in front again. Horvat's fourth goal, former captain of the national team. Saved. He says there was something wrong with that. Not sure what it was. But the Spanish referees don't agree. I'm afraid that uh, Jonsson, not having his best championship, one from three now, but that went straight in. Horvat. Goalkeeper efficiency is high, actually. 35% Croatia, 32% for Bergerud. Hands off. Dunjak. Goal now, and the pressure beyond, but it's a steal. Break is on. Bjornsson makes no mistake this time. It's all square again. Eight seconds to go before half-time. Quick shot. And that's been blocked, and it's nothing given. There was uh, Dunyak, released the ball, nothing given by the referees. And Yondal tees up the captain, Jonsson. It's all square again. Can you believe it? They just can't separate themselves. Well, a quick breather, I think, for everybody in the arena at the moment. So, Johannesson trying to find some energy, the fans for their part. Living on the edge here. Well, we 
Norwegian fans trying to be cool about this, but uh, hearts must be beating so fast down there. So the final five minutes of extra time. If this can't separate them, we'll go to penalties. Taking a little bit of extra time there. Dunyak is trying to get his team motivated. Sagerson. He won't start because uh, it'll be a Croatian attack to get things underway here. Which with the scores level is probably not bad for them. So. Christian Berger looks as his team throw off, or as the uh, Croatians throw off, rather. And his team will work very hard to try and deny them, because uh, psychologically, as we said earlier, especially as you run towards the end, that's gone wide, nothing given. It wasn't a great shot by him at all. Johannesson, attacking foul. Well... Both teams making some mistakes here, poor choices. Johannesson there crashing in. At the other end, Stepancic with a shot that probably wasn't really on. He'll argue, of course, that he was being impeded from one side and that's why he crashed into the uh, player on the other side. But it's too late to worry about that now. Less than four minutes remaining. Gullerud moving up. Passive play has been called against them. I think they've used a couple of passes. Kemper! Oh, save Bergerud! Number 14! It was a lovely Kemper. Teed the ball up in the air to catch and shoot before he landed. But Stepancic misses. And that's an attacking foul the other way. It's almost as if the nerves... They're living on nerves and they're making the mistakes. Crashes into both. That's clearly an attacking foul. And Berger can't believe it. He is livid because that was a good chance. That was superb. And it was a fine save to finish it off. Berger. But again, a short attack by Norway in a turnover. And with less than three minutes to go, Croatia on the attack now. Way through, oh, and an attacking foul there too! Stepancic runs into the defence. Lino Sherva remonstrates. Well, both players jumping up to meet him. Got a little sympathy with him, but uh, there you go. That's how the calls go. It is so tight when you make them. You sit at home and look at it and go, well, that, that was a penalty or that was a free throw, but referees don't have the replay they've got to make a snap decision and I can tell you mostly they'll get it right two minutes back to this very deep 5-1 defense tried to go on the inside post the whistle's already gone and uh, Sagerson has crashed heavily into the uh, hoardings at the back seems to be okay tried to go around good defense he wasn't going to let him anywhere near that Stepancic, his club teammate last year at uh, Paris Saint-Germain. So, Goularud, cool heads are needed. Passive play's been called. Tangan, they're going to run out of passes here. Tries to go around. He's got the free throw, but it can't be more than a couple of passes at best before he shoots. And they're getting themselves into all kinds of tight corners. They don't need to be in Norway. Too close, no one to help. But of course, it's the 5-1 defence that's problematic for them because Dunyak is out there. And normally they look across and move the ball comfortably to the centre. But that option isn't there anymore. Dunyak is loitering. He's right in front of Sagusa. Knows he's got a big shot. They'll have asked the referee how many passes we've got. And it must have been two. Takes the shot, clips two sides of the barn, stays out. One and a half minutes to go, and Croatia now 
Can they wrap it up? O'Sullivan comes on into the defence. But good defence by Croatia, forcing the uh, shot wide in the end. Ball coming off uh, Angel Sabosa's foot, but if he doesn't mind my saying so, referee counts as fixtures and fittings in a match. Would have been a throw in any way to Croatia. Horvat now has gone into the right back position. Stepancic waiting wide into the last minute. This is the money time. He's oh, double dribble. Dunyak dropped the ball, picks it up again. He can't believe it. They are tired arms and tired legs out there. In fact, it's his knee, or just below the knee. 35 seconds to go. And so Norway will look for the uh, last shot here and try and take themselves to the final. Defence is pushing up. Excellent defending. Johannesson, good save by Segal. 15 seconds for Croatia to take it there. That was too early, didn't need to shoot. Into the line! Croatia scored! Seconds to go! Long range shot and that's it! At the death, Musa. Defence specialist, club teammate of O'Sullivan, has given the victory they so, so wanted. With three seconds to go, the final score here in Stockholm, Norway 28, Croatia 29 after double extra time. Norway are stunned. Johannesson's shot. Clips the post, it wasn't a bad effort. But then there was Moussa, turns and drops it underneath Bergerud. Both teams had their chances, but they defended so well and the Norwegians had no answers with their attack at the end. Unsurprisingly, Karabatic goes to celebrate with his fans. And we thought this might be Norway's year, finally. But Croatia have denied them, as they did in Poland four years ago. Scenes of unbridled joy, and quite rightly so, amongst the Croatians. What a defence. Christian Berger, crestfallen, has sat down. The shock for him and the Norwegians. Harsh, harsh, but that said, we didn't want this to go to penalties. Mandic played for 78 and a half minutes. Musa, who did a huge job in defence and ironically then became the scorer. And Shigo with 11 saves. Johannesson will have nightmares about that last shot that clipped the post. It came down to so very little. O'Sullivan. Club teammate in Magdeburg. Player of the match, Domagoj Dunyak. Eight goals, two assists. He played for 68 and a half minutes, played a huge, huge game. And I don't think he realizes he's uh, so exhausted. And uh, I think he's just realized they're having to come to him. Well, what an incredible player Domagoj Dunyak is. Played over 200 times for his country. And he's approaching the 700 goal mark. But he has played uh, an enormous game and uh, left his fans in tears. So it will be Croatia in the final, but will they have Spain or Slovenia against them? And yet again at the Euro competition, the Norwegians are left crestfallen, so close, but they will be able to battle at least for the bronze medal. They've never won a medal at the Euro. It was an epic game, double extra time needed, and it all came down to the last 15 seconds of the game with the Johannesson miss and a quick attack by Croatia to score with three seconds remaining. 
Norwegian fans. They'll need time to digest this. So the uh, final score here in Stockholm in the first semi-final, Croatia 29, Norway 28. Next up, though, Spain will take on Slovenia. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the game. Thanks so much for watching, and do please join us for the second one. But for now, from me, Paul Bray, goodbye. So if you are still watching, just to let you know that uh, in light of this uh, double extra time that's taken us a little bit over the schedule, the next semi-final will now be delayed and start at uh, 20.45 Central European time. We'll see you then. Thank you.